welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. In this video, you will learn what a metal microstructure is and what the structure tells us about the properties of this material. In addition, you will learn more about alloys as a mixture of two or more components and how to distinguish them. The direct transition of a substance from a solid state to a liquid state is called melting. But what actually happens during this process? At room temperature, there is no movement of the atoms in the microstructure's lattice. Energy added is transformed into oscillation energy. This results in an increase of temperature and volume. After reaching melting temperature, the temperature stops increasing. The supplied heat is consumed, moving the atoms away from each another until they reach the disordered state of melting. The heat consumed during the melting process is called melting heat. Hence, melting is an endothermic process. After that, the temperature can rise again. During cooling of the melt, the temperature time curve follows an exponential curve until the crystallization temperature Tc is reached. The temperature remains constant until the entire melt is solidified. The energy released in this process, supplied as melting heat during heating, is released as heat of crystallization. The temperatures at which the heat and cooling curves display a horizontal curve are called arrest points. During solidification of metallic materials, crystals are formed. However, Two prerequisites are necessary for crystal growth. There must be crystal nuclei and the crystals must grow. Crystal nuclei are categorized into internal and foreign nuclei. Internal nuclei are tiny crystal residues that are not fully melted. They are found in all melts that are not overheated. Foreign nuclei are slag particles or certain additives to the melt that induce a special type of crystallization. For crystal growth, the melt has to be supercooled, which means the temperature of the melt must be decreased below the solidification temperature. When melts contain or form a large number of nuclei, these start growing simultaneously, causing the metal to solidify with a fine-grained structure. If there are only few nuclei in the melt, these few crystals become very large. In this case, the metal solidifies with a coarse grain structure. As we have already learned, the grain size significantly affects the material properties due to the two-dimensional lattice defect grain boundary. Hence, a fine grain structure is stronger and tougher than a coarse grain structure. The crystals continue to grow until they collide or until there is no melt left. The crystals that have been prevented from growing larger are called crystallites, or in metallurgy, they are also referred to as grains. As we have already learned, the boundaries between neighboring grains are called grain boundaries. The term structure is used to describe the combination of crystals and impurities in metals and alloys. Primary structures are the result of primary forming, which is the initial shaping of an originally shapeless matter. Primary structures are transformed into secondary structures by heat treatment, conversion or forming processes carried out in the solid state. If two metals or one metal and a non-metal are melted together, a two-component system is formed in a molten state. The source materials of this binary system are referred to as components. The state of alloys is determined 
by the state variables temperature T, concentration C and pressure P. Structural changes like solidification, solution and precipitation processes, conversion processes or the formation of new phases are always associated with a change of the state variables T, P or C. Most technical production and processing processes for materials are carried out at normal atmospheric pressure of 1 bar. Thus, every material state can be described by the two values of T and C. If we consider an alloy consisting of two metals, A and B, the phase diagram provides a complete overview of all possible phase transformations of the structure of all alloys consisting of A and an increasing content of B from 0 to 100% as a function of the temperature T and the concentration C. Let's take a look at four basic types of binary systems and their corresponding phase diagrams. A binary system consisting of iron and lead with complete insolubility in the liquid and solid state. A binary system consisting of copper and nickel with complete solubility in the solid state. A binary system consisting of lead and antimony with complete insolubility in the solid state. And a binary system consisting of tin and lead with limited solubility in the solid state. In the simplest case, both components of a binary system already separate in the melt, which means a system with complete insolubility in the liquid and solid state. Above the melting temperature of the components, both iron and lead are liquid, with the iron floating on top of the lead due to its lower density. When the crystallization temperature of iron is reached at 1536 degrees Celsius, the typical arrest point of pure metals becomes apparent. After solidification of the iron, there is solid iron besides liquid lead and the system can continue to cool down. When the crystallization temperature of lead is reached at 327 degrees Celsius, the second arrest point becomes apparent. After solidification of the lead, both the iron and the lead are in a solid state and the system can continue to cool down. Due to a varying mass fraction of lead, the exact characteristics of the arrest points may change, but not their position. Hence, transferring the arrest points into the temperature concentration diagram results in the phase diagram shown on the left. In reality, it is actually very rare that two metals exhibit no solubility at all in the liquid and solid state. Therefore, this case does not play a significant role in practice. When both components of a binary system are not separated in the liquid state, but completely soluble in each other, an alloy is formed. The components soluble in each other in the liquid state can either remain completely soluble in the solid state or soluble to a limited extent or finely dispersed. The components are contained in the alloy either in pure form or as a solid solution. Given complete solubility in the sol solid state, the solid solution is homogeneous. Limited solubility in the solid state results in a crystal mixture consisting of two different solid solutions. The A-rich solid solution and the B-rich solid solution. In the case of complete insolubility, a crystal mixture consisting of crystals after the two pure metals is formed. The different basic elements that are formed from the components are referred to as phases of the alloy. When alloys form solid solutions in the solid state, the metal lattice contains atoms of both components. Two types of solid solutions can be distinguished. First, interstitial solid solutions. These are formed when small atoms are embedded in the lattice gaps of a metal. We already came across this 
when we talked about the zero-dimensional lattice defect, interstitial atoms. Second, substitutional solid solutions. These are formed when foreign atoms replace atoms of the base metal with the lat within the lattice. We already came across this when we talked about zero-dimensional lattice defects, substitutional atoms. The formation of substitutional solid solutions in any proportional combination of the two components is only possible if both types of atoms dissolved in each other are very similar. That is, when the following conditions are fulfilled. Same lattice types, approximately the same atomic radii, and chemical similarity. Typical alloys with complete solubility in the solid state that form substitutional solid solutions are iron chromium, iron nickel, gold copper, gold silver, and copper nickel alloys. An important system that forms interstitial solid solutions is iron carbon in the form of austenite. We will discuss the iron carbon system in detail in the next chapter. The embedding of foreign atoms is not visible in the micrograph. Only the grains and grain boundaries can be seen. Accordingly, the micrograph does not differ from that of pure metals. If you are curious to see how phase diagrams are obtained, take a look at the next video. Thanks for watching.